Deep in the countryside, a happy and loving couple are expecting their first child. They learn that the child has strange deformities, horns and a curved back with spines. The couple don't care, the baby is a gift. But that night, the child's real father appears. Agents Mulder and Scully go to investigate. The devil is present, and he's not who you think he is. Hello and welcome in Films and Series Recap. Today, we are going to see an episode of the series, X-Files, called, Terms of Endearment. I hope you enjoy it. <coughs> the episode begins in Hollins, Virginia, in an obstetrician's office. The couple, Wayne and Laura, are standing in front of him. With difficulty, the doctor tells them something about their baby. The baby had unexplained deformities of the skull and back, two protuberances on the forehead, and deformities of the back. On hearing this news, the father left the room, looking deeply disturbed. His wife remained strong, joined him, and asked him to remain hopeful. That evening, the couple were still in shock. Wayne goes back to bed and offers his wife a glass of milk. He still seems moved by the news, and before going to sleep reaffirms that he really does love her. For her part, Laura, who has remained strong for him, cannot hide her grief once her back is turned. She falls asleep, only to be awoken by a bright light during the night. To her horror, a being with piercing red eyes, horns and a bent back full of thorns, surrounded by flames stood at the foot of her bed. The demon grabs her and pulls her towards him, causing her to scream in terror. She desperately calls out to Wayne for help, but his side of the bed is empty. At the same time, the demon plunges his hands into Laura's stomach as she tries to defend herself by biting him, but to no avail. Baby cries are heard. In the arms of this diabolical creature, who looks exactly like the devil, is her unborn child. The deformities on its face turn out to be horns. He lifts the demon baby towards the sky. Laura screams and eventually wakes up, sweating, next to Wayne. The room is empty. She is shocked and tells him about her horrible nightmare. Wayne tries to reassure her, but the bed is wet. When he looks at his hand, he realizes it's covered in blood. She is no longer pregnant, and their bed is stained with blood, plunging the couple into a state of horrified shock. Several weeks later, we find ourselves in the offices of the FBI. Officer Stevens is discussing his case with Agent Spender, who is in charge of X-Files. He presents the report and shares details of the case. It is important to note that the sheriff is Laura's brother, and there is a rumor going around town that the disappearance is linked to an illegal abortion rather than supernatural phenomena. However, the sheriff believes in his sister and asks for the FBI's help. Agent Spender thanks him for bringing the case in and promises to do whatever it takes to solve the mystery. After the sheriff leaves, he throws away and destroys the report. A few days later, we find Officer Stevens back in town, accompanied by Agent Fox Mulder. Mulder holds the destroyed report in his hands, preferring not to let Officer Spender know of their visit. They earnestly question the tragic parents about their traumatic night. Laura is deeply distressed and tells Mulder that everything seems so real, with a demon and her child with horns on his forehead. Mulder then asks Wayne about his absence during the attack, and Wayne attributes it to a simple nightmare. Mulder decides to contact his colleague, Dana Scully, who is a doctor and was his partner in the cold cases. He sends her images of the baby's ultrasound. A fervent believer in the existence of the supernatural, Mulder suspects that this is an act mentioned in the Middle Ages, known as Actus Nocturnus. It refers to the devil, taking on the appearance of a dark and charming man, who spreads the seed of Beelzebub in innocent women. According to the stories, the process ends with the harvest of their offspring. Unbeknownst to them, Wayne is listening in via the baby monitor. That evening, Laura couldn't find Wayne in the house. She finds him in the garden, near the outdoor boiler burning something in the distance, hidden from her. He has just set fire to a wrapped, blood-red thing. Laura joins him, and he claims to be burning dead leaves. She returns home reassured, but in the cauldron is the lifeless body of the baby, and he in tears. The next day, Mulder, 
who had stayed outside Wayne and Laura's house, is woken by a call from Scully, who tells him about her findings. She had been working all night on Laura's medical file, but had been unable to find any concrete explanation for the child's strange appearance. However, she did find traces of mandrake in Laura's blood. This plant is a poison that was used in the past in clandestine abortions and can induce childbirth. What's more, one of its side effects is hallucinations. For Scully, this means that Laura probably had an abortion and lied about it, as it is illegal in the state. For Mulder, the responsibility lies with Wayne. He suspects him of being a real demon. During the day, Wayne meets up with a woman. It is his other wife, Betsy, and she is also pregnant. Using the excuse of his travels as a roving medical insurance broker to explain his long disappearances. The atmosphere at Laura's house is tense as Mulder has had to report his suspicions of an abortion to Officer Stevens, which deeply scandalizes her brother. Laura defends herself by saying that she only took herbs to sleep, not mandrake. When Wayne returns home, Mulder explains that these accusations risk sending Laura to prison, not hesitating to use clear expressions in reference to hell. He offers Wayne to let them search their property to remove any doubt. With his back against the wall, Wayne have to agree. He then takes Laura aside and tells her what he saw that night. He claims to have seen her in a trance holding a baby in her arms and reciting satanic incantations, that it was she who killed the baby. He insists that he did everything to protect her by taking the baby and hiding it in a blanket, then making it disappear into the garden. Upset, Laura believes him and bursts into tears. With the atmosphere already charged with emotion, an officer calls from the garden to announce a terrible discovery. The baby's charred body has been found. Laura doesn't remember anything but she feels guilty and apologizes to everyone. Believe in Wayne's version. Officer Stevens is forced to arrest his own sister. Mulder confronts Wayne, telling him that he knows who he really is. Later, Wayne is on the phone in his convertible with Betsy, his second wife, whom he is about to join. Mulder appears in the car next door and starts following Wayne. Suspicious, Wayne lies to Mulder, claiming that he is visiting a client as a broker. Mulder offers to escort him anyway. Wayne makes an urgent visit to a client, anxious to dispel the suspicions hanging over him. The client is a mother. At the sight of her children, he confides in her about his desire to have his own, letting slip that he has been trying for a thousand years. As he bends over she notices protuberances on his spine. While chatting, he notices Mulder near his car, which puts him on the alert. Wayne takes drastic action and calls his superiors to accuse him of harassment. Mulder is informed of the situation, but does not back down and remains determined to uncover the truth. Wayne is finally summoned to visit Laura in her cell. She is more conscious and has thought about the story Wayne has told her. She notices inconsistencies in his version. Wayne claimed to have put the baby in a blanket, but in reality the baby was found in her dressing gown, which had been torn by the demon. Laura is skeptical. Despite everything, Wayne tries to reassure her, but then she notices the bite mark on his shoulder that she had given to the demon. That's when she realizes the truth, beyond any doubt. Wayne was responsible for the supernatural events. He tells her that he really, he tells her that he really do love her. With great sadness, he grabs her. He then begins to swallow her soul. Emergency is called as the woman has stopped breathing. Officer Stevens and Mulder are also present. Mulder knows that Wayne, even though he looks saddened, is the cause. The paramedics manage to get Laura's heart beating again. Much to Wayne's surprise, she is taken to emergency. That evening, Wayne went to see Betsy. She tells him that the baby also has deformities. Wayne hides his disappointment from the woman and offers to make her a glass of milk, secretly laced with mandrake. Mulder is at the hospital by Laura's side and is joined by his colleague, Agent Scully. Examining Laura's file, Scully is unable to find an explanation for a coma. Mulder shows her his findings. He found information about Wayne's past. He arrived a few years ago from a remote part of Europe and has been changing names ever since. He was suspected of murdering two ex-wives, but there was no evidence to charge him. 
His first name was Veles, which is also the name of a horn demon who sicked up souls. The devil. It crossed down. Wayne offers the glass of milk to an unsuspecting Betsy. Following Mulder's suspicions, the sheriff's department searches Wayne's property and discovers the skeleton of another baby. This one is frightening having horns and looking devilish. A warrant is out for Wayne's arrest. Mulder then understands Wayne's objective. He's not just looking for offspring. He wants a child, a human child, not a demon. During the night, Betsy is woken by a bright light, and Wayne appears in his demonic form and grabs her, pulling her down onto the bed. Surprisingly, however, she calls him directly by his first name, Wayne, and with incredible strength, she grabs the demon by the throat. Meanwhile, Mulder and Scully have put out a bowl low for Wayne and head to the other part of town where one of his offices is located. There they come across Wayne's convertible car with Betsy inside, in tears and shock, her clothes stained with blood. She tells them that the father of her baby has taken her child away from her. At Betsy's house, Mulder and Scully prepare to arrest Wayne. They find him in the garden, crying, brooding. They ask him to return the child, but he is surprised and tells them that he didn't take it from her. His only wish was to have a family life. With tears in his eyes, he describes her as a monster and weeps over her actions. Despite this, Mulder and Scully don't understand and ask him to stop trying to hide the evidence. Wayne replies that he's not burying it, but digging it up. He is about to explain to them who Betsy really is. But that's when Officer Stevens, Laura's brother, opens fire on him several times. Wayne, still alive, is taken to hospital next to Laura's bed, who is still in a coma. When he regained consciousness, he sees her beside him. With a last breath, he gives her back her soul. And Laura eventually wakes up. Later, the agents are faced with a difficult task when they search the grounds of Wayne's second wife, Betsy, due to the gruesome nature of their findings. Inside, they found several bodies of babies. But these babies were not deformed in any way. They were healthy. This discovery leaves them perplexed and unable to understand the situation. Mulder explains to Scully that Betsy is the author. Unlike Wayne, she didn't want to have an ordinary child, but rather something that only he could give her. The episode ends with Betsy in Wayne's convertible, with a smile on her face. Next to her is a bassinet, and inside we get a glimpse of the baby's hands, complete with scales and claws. Betsy smiles, her demonic red eyes exposed. The end. I loved making this video. Let me know what you thought, or recommend new films to explore. I read all comments. Subscribe, and see you soon on Films and Series Recap. Bye for now.